Hey everybody, what's up? Chris Simmons with createinsights.com here with my friend Matt Thompson with songfreedom.com. Matt, how's it going, buddy? Going great. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on here. Awesome. So in this expert interrogation, we're going to talk about music licensing, kind of what's on the horizon with the industry, and basically how you guys can get in on using some of just, you know, the, the latest and greatest music that's out there for your own production. So here we go. I kind of, I mean, I looked on the website and I did some, you know, just, just looking at sort of some of the questions on your FAQ, um, but also if if you have in mind just kind of off the bat, I mean, what are sort of just the main bare bones questions people have that even want them to, you know, sort of seek out your service? I mean, what are the main? I mean, <clears throat> yeah, good. Um, you know, the, I, I think two and a half years ago when we launched our service, there was still a lot of uncertainty out there as far as just in general, what was and, and was not quote legal uh, in, in that, as far as like you know, what constituted personal use or what constituted you know commercial use and that. And I, I think that you know we we've blown past that point, and, and, and people have an understanding that you know whether you're making a dollar on uh, you know uh, shooting the video, editing the video, selling the video, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's it, it's commercial. Uh, so you know that's that's not a big deal. You know now, you know it's it's all about. Uh, I, I think everybody understands the rules. They understand that there's uh, there, there's I guess consequences in some cases if you, if you don't follow them. Uh, that's been evident with you know I, I've at this point over the last year only heard of about maybe about fifteen or so uh, lawsuits towards uh, the videography community and all that. Um, I, I only see that getting worse before it gets better since. Uh, uh, you, you know the um, uh, the main company that's been uh, looking at folks has been EMI, and now they just merged with Universal. So then that, of course, means that they've got forty five percent of the music in the world uh, to enforce <laughs> for for infringement. So it's half of eighty million songs <laughs> out there are are uh, potentially penalized. Um, but uh, in any case, you know, so so that's all, you know, we've kind of blown past all that stuff. And now it's all about everybody like, OK, we know the, you know, we know the score of the game. We know what has to be done. What has to happen to get more content? Now we want, you know, OK, we want to do it the right way. We're on board. Just give us some more options. And, you know, it's uh, it's definitely a process. That's one of those, you know, it's it's a little easier said than done type of things. Uh, you know what? What probably a lot of people don't realize is, you know, in in music licensing, there's of course a process involved, and uh, I'm definitely not gonna, you know, bore anyone to death <laughs> details of, of, you know, what it takes. But suffice to say, there's uh, on a on a lot of songs, whether it's a you know One Republic or Black Eyed Peas or something like that. Once you start getting into mainstream music, in a lot of cases, you have to get a sign off by maybe. 16 different people for each song that you want. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty time consuming process. Uh, it's a very costly uh, process, not, not only for the music, but the, you know, the time spent procuring the music. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think one of the large misconceptions in that is that, you know, it's, it's the labels uh, or, or publishers or whoever that are holding back the content and, and uh, hoarding it, if you will, and, <laughs> and, and all that, uh, when, when in reality, you know, we've got, you know, over the last couple of years, we've developed this great relationship uh, with the labels and publishers. Um, and now it's really up to the artists and the writers to want to say yes to people using their music. And in some cases, they don't want that. Uh, there's there's a lot of artists out there that you know we've approached and said no I don't want my music being used in a wedding video absolutely not if I see it <laughs> uh, wow. I'm happy about it uh, it has nothing to do with the label um, it's it's the artist uh, wanting to be able to control how how their you know content is used huh. uh, you know just in you know just just like a you know a photographer or, or a cinematographer might want their you know, film, you know, used in certain ways or not in certain ways. And you want to have 
the ability to, you know, ha- have discretion over where that ends up. So, um, yeah, and, I mean, I guess my vision, you know, it's, it's awesome what you're doing with, with song freedom, with the weddings. And, and I, you know, it, 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 I guess it's called non-commercial, but obviously the video professionals are making money off of, of kind of the end product, which is awesome. But the thing that I've envisioned for years, and I'm hoping someday it'll happen, whether it's, it's with your service or, or maybe even iTunes, you know, like an iTunes commercial, you know, or something that it's basically like, okay, yeah, it's 99 cents to put it on your iPhone and listen to it. But right. I mean, and I had a client this morning that, that I, we're wrapping up a video that has uh, a copyrighted music in it and it's for internal use only and I hate doing it, but they're like, you know what? It's never going to see the light of day. We just want to show our employees. And I'm like, Hey, that's on you. That's, you know, whatever. But I'm sitting there thinking, man, some of these companies, I mean, this is a large corporation. I mean, they would gladly pay a thousand dollars to be able to, to use the song one time on one video on their YouTube channel, you know? And it just seems like to me that the artists are missing out on so much revenue because I think people would be honest and pay that amount, you know, to use it without repercussion. But 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 they're using it anyway, so there's no revenue that's coming out of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you know, so so corporate, I, you know, I, I would just call it corporate licensing. Obviously, yeah. wedding stuff is like small commercial, or what I like to call it prosumer, right. uh, if you will, just because it is commercial, but it's generally just for a single consumer and not a mass market, even though a, a wedding cinematographer would be, you know, placing the video online for self-promotion. Uh, so it's a marketing tool, but, you know, for the small corporate stuff that's like internal use only, and, you know, we, we definitely get requests and things on that, um, you know, we're, well, all I can say right now is we're, we're trying to work on a, a way to make that a reality. Yeah. Uh, companies being able to do something like that easily and affordably. Uh, corporate is one of those things. So when we talk about music rights, corporate is even scarier to to everyone on, on the content owner side, whether it's label, publisher, artist, or writer, artist management, whatever that that we deal with on a on a daily basis. So you think about like uh, you know song freedom as it exists today. You know we've got this pre cleared set of rights that as long as your video is in context to a, a wedding video, a baby portrait slideshow, a senior portrait slideshow, yada yada yada, sixteen specific kinds of uses that Ryan Tedder from One Republic or Kobe Calais can look at and say you know what, I'm fine with the scope of that. Um, as soon as we open it up for this blanket corporate thing, that's when it starts to really, really scare everyone. Because then it's all of a sudden, it's like, well, you know, is that is that an internal thing for the NRA? And I hate guns. Ah, it, yeah, okay, okay. But so, so broad. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know about, uh, kind, of, kind of a fun little thing, but, you know, one of the, uh, biggest artists in, in the world um, turned down a uh, basically about $500,000 for a TV spot uh, for, for milk because lactose intolerant, I don't like milk, and therefore I don't want to do anything to <laughs> support milk or anything like that. So, you know, this, this artist, you know, half a million dollars is probably nothing to them um, in the grand scheme. But, you know, for these guys, it's not always about money. It's about yeah. what, is their, what is their work? What is their uh, whatever they poured their heart and soul into, you know, what, what does it represent? What is it tied to? Um, so corporate's, corporate's tough. I, and I say that to say, you know, yes, we're making strides toward being able to, to do some things and um, – and all that, you know, I think that the same thing comes up in almost every conversation with a content owner, um, you know, whether it's corporate or nonprofit and things like that with blanket. They're like, well, does it doesn't like the KKK have a nonprofit chapter? Oh, man. It's like it's like we would all just license to them, you know, Good Life by Wonder Public or something. And, you know, God knows what's going on in the video and everything. So, you know, of course, that's the. Worst case scenario, uh, but I always call the the one arm midget that like you're probably not gonna see it. It's probably you know not not going to appear before you, but you never know. You know what? That's funny though because I've never in in all the hours I've probably sent, spent thinking about this kind of thing, I've I've never thought of it from that approach. I always thought it was a, you know, if if 
Fortune 500 company X uses my music to pr and they generate half a billion dollars in revenue off of this marketing effort, you know, where's my cut? I mean, I guess I, that's kind of, I thought it was, you know, I had no idea that it also had the component of, well, what are they selling and do I even support that? And are they, you know, are, is the, the, you know, do they vote one way versus another way? And I don't want to, you know, I don't want my music to be, I mean, it, it's, it, it, now it makes more sense. So I wonder if at some point, maybe there'll be just, or there, there'll be some way to, to either clarify that or have some kind of clearing house that maybe it says, okay, um, you know, song mad at song freedom or, or song freedom, the company, you can use our music, but only with this extended type of thing, you know, and, and, and maybe it becomes a user like us or other video or, who, or visual professionals maybe have to submit an application to Song Freedom that says, this is how we want to use it. Is this OK? And maybe you cross check that with whatever was agreed to. I mean, I know that's a lot of work, but it could also be a lot of revenue, you know, that, that comes out of that, too. Agreed. I mean, the, the potential is huge. You know, the, the reality is, is once, you know, we're working through it, it, it as far as like being able to actually automate the process as much as possible, because once you get past like the, the control factor of it, it's, it's all about how much can you streamline this sucker? Um, you know, from our perspective, you know, for, for me to do a single corporate license and you know, do do the contract and all this, that, and the other. I mean, it's it's difficult for me to charge. This is just for me to charge so little and have it right. be worth my time, right. and, and somebody still be able to afford it. Um, from the from the the content owner's perspective, you know what you're looking at is you know let, let's say you wanted to use um, you know something by the Black Eyed Peas or something like that. And, and like I said, you, you've got to have 16 people sign off on this thing. And so your $1,000, in, in theory, let's say it's getting split up 16 different ways. Right. Um, they, they're having, you know, there's always 80, 80 bucks, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's, oh, by the way, it's got to go through the uh, the legal department. And then the, the licensing contract department's got to do this. after It loops back through the licensing department and then bring in royalty accounting. And that, and all of a sudden, your $1,000, they just... Each of them just lost five thousand dollars on, on on selling this thing. So you know the only, the only thing that makes song freedom work really is the is the full automation of it. Um, we, as I said, we're working on some things. I, I think we can automate the corporate process uh, up to about eighty or ninety percent. Wow, which is which is huge uh, in, in theory. Assuming we can we can get all this uh, finished and, and and get everyone's buy in and everything like that. So uh, it, it's a huge opportunity, and it's one of those things. I hope we can I, I hope we can pull it off because I, I think it's a it's a huge win for for you and your clients, and um, I, I think the music industry as well. Well, and it could be, and we'll get back to what you actually are doing now as opposed to my tangent. I'm just so interested in this stuff. But um, it could even be a, maybe as a producer like me, as a production company, maybe there's a, 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 pretty, a pretty high fee, you know, just to be a member at that corporate level to be able to have access to that kind of stuff, which, um, you know, would not only give some production companies a competitive advantage, but would also give you the revenue, you know, because not every company is going to be able to pay, you know, a thousand dollars a month to have access to that kind of stuff, you know, but there are probably a significant percentage who would, because that's a huge selling point. You know, if you can go to a company and say, Hey, we can, not only can we do your commercial, but we can do it with this kind of music in, in our competitors in this area, aren't going to be able to do that. But that's, I mean, I know that's a, a different oh, kind of direction, but I see where you're going with that, though. That's uh, yeah, that's interesting. I, I think that you know that that concept has some some merit to it for sure. And obviously, there would be a lot of uh, market research on our end to go yeah. and you know what what percentage of the market is willing to pay for something like that. What are they willing to pay? All all that, and then we um, you know would, would have to, of course, then pitch that to all the the sure. owners and, and see what flies. Well, I I think what you're doing is is just really cool because we've been. I mean, ever since I started. Uh, this company back in 2000, my company, Six Strong Media, um, it, it's just, we don't get a, a ton of questions, but we always have clients who are like, well, we want to use this particular song. And then it becomes the whole process of trying to talk them off the ledge on why 
you well, can't use it or if you want to use it that's fine but you know the process is crazy in terms of who you get in touch with and all that you know and by the time you know the deadline is coming gone for the video to be complete there we're still six months out from getting a decision on whether or not we can use the song you know i mean that was based on on my understanding back then because i sure. actually tried the process at one point and it was like well you got to call this company and you got to call this attorney and then you know i had to get an attorney involved and it was just like forget that so you know <laughs> our sort of standard so let's let's go back to um, you know, I know you'd mentioned the, the 16 ways that you can use it. I'm not going to make you list it. If, uh, if, you, if you guys want to know that, go to the site songfreedom.com and, and knock yourselves out. But because there's a lot of really cool applications. But if you're if I mean, what are some of the most popular ways that that people are using your music? I mean, what kind of professional, maybe what kind of presentation and what are you seeing out there? Yeah, uh, you know, far and away, I, I think. You know, it's it's easy to say that weddings are the the number one application, uh, whether that's video or, or photo slideshow. Um, you know, think about it. I mean, just in the U.S. alone, there, there's something like 2.4 million weddings every year. Wow! And, and even if there's not video at every one of those, you better believe that there's photo at the majority of them. Uh, you know, slideshows are becoming an increasingly popular form of uh, you know self marketing, you know, promotion and that they're posting on Facebook and turning around and selling it to a client. Uh, obviously, the uh, the wedding videos are huge. Um, seeing uh, on the on the photo side of things, a, an uptick, uh, and this is interesting because they they're starting to do videos as well for these. But uh, starting to see an uptick in uh, senior portrait slideshows. That's high school seniors. High school seniors, yeah. Citizens, um, and uh, and then the baby portraiture, and baby and family stuff, and all that. So you're seeing this uptick in that. But then um, simultaneously, as these uh, a lot of the photographers are discovering that the, these, uh, you know, DSLRs, hey, they shoot video. Um, they're, they're starting to like take little video clips that are almost like a behind-the-scenes look at the photo shoot, and incorporating those uh, into their slideshow slash video. So we're seeing more and more on that. But weddings is still, you know, very very prevalent. Uh, I, I would say, as far as like a you know breakdown of our member base, we're still. Uh, probably sixty to seventy percent of our of our members are photographers. Wow! Uh, first and video second, but that's you know you know you, you do the math and, and figure out again. You know we 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 serve members in about twelve different countries at this point, but you know just look at the U.S. and, and you think between full and part time, you know according to the Census Bureau, there's like a hundred thousand photographers and maybe eight thousand. Right. Uh, videographers as, as they uh, place yeah, and the, yeah and, the, uh, and and that's just all the people that are actually reporting what they do and I'm sure the numbers right. are even more exaggerated with you know oh. the actual photographers versus actual videographer I mean you know probably you know at least 10 20 times the amount I'm sure oh yeah and I mean you know part part of that is you know to, to me a huge huge amount of that really, really in, in serving both camps both the photo and, and cinema communities and that you know the the huge holdback right now for for the photographers is the editing process. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think audio can be a, a hindrance for these guys a little bit, but they're not as scared of that as they are, you know, opening up Final Cut. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. At it and like, oh my gosh, what do I do with all these layers? And you know what's, <laughs> you know yeah. what on here and it just scares the heck out of them even even iMovie with its you know I think three layers or something is like you know daunting um, in, in a way but you know there's there's these um, video maker companies in that that are making the process a bit more automated so my, my suspicion is, is that you're going to see um, a lot more crossover and, and you know we'll, we'll see that surely because you know people are using our music and applying it to those things and um, we, we, we keep up on what it's being used for pretty well uh, you know that said, there, there's just this massive potential right now for crossover the other way, uh, with you know folks like you know Red Camera and that, where you can grab these ridiculously crisp stills off of any point of your video. Um, so holy cow, you know I, I hope that you know the video folks really start to take advantage of that. You know it's it's funny. It's like when the DSLRs first came out, it, it was sort of like maybe even before they came out. I saw a lot of 
uh, and this is sort of off topic, but I, I saw a lot of photographers complaining about how videographers were selling these still frames, you know, as, as part of their thing. And of course, you know, and, and back then the quality of the still frame was nothing like the still photography, you know, just because the images weren't as high res. But now, I mean, like you said, anything goes. So, but, but I haven't heard, I've heard much more about photographers offering video than I have, you know, videographers offering photos coming from the, from the actual footage itself. So it will be interesting to see how that, that molds. So in yeah. terms of the, uh, you talked about how photographers or, or people are using a lot of uh, your music for the slideshows themselves. Do you know, I mean, what's kind of the popular format for how they build the slideshows? I mean, do you, have you talked much with them on that? Yeah, as far as, um, yeah, um, you know, a lot of them are starting to do uh, same day edits. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, all the video folks are familiar with for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and I, from from what I know, the majority of them are doing the, those SDEs via Lightroom and, and that and just okay. setting this up on the fly because it's quick, it's easy. Some of them are using iPhoto. Uh, okay. I, I've used iPhoto before. It's phenomenally. Oh, it's slow. fantastic. We use it too, yeah. It's, it's great. Um, and then, you know, for, for something that's a little bit more unique, a lot of them are using some of these uh, online services that are out there for, for automated slideshow creation. Yeah. Like Throwing Animoto, in. and I think there's a couple of those kinds of things, huh? That's exactly right. Yeah, Animoto is kind of the, uh, seems to be the industry leader right now. There's uh, uh, Photodex has something called Pro Show Web, which is pretty cool, and then another called Emotion. Those are kind of the uh, three industry leaders in, in photography, um, but um, yeah, it's it's um, it's a huge huge business. Um, so that that's what Song Freedom needs to do, man. You need to have your own uh, like photo <laughs> animated app, you know, that just you know select your music, you know, plug it in and and hit order, you know. Uh, and I, I mean, don't think I haven't thought about it. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's one of those things, you know. I I, I figure if I. Uh, Right. If I want to cut back to you know three or four hours of sleep at night, yeah, I, can, cut back. <laughs> I can always do that. But too, uh, too many ideas, not enough time, right? It, pretty pretty much only one me. So well, let's uh, you know let's kind of wrap this thing up. And and before we go, um, I'd like you just just kind of if if somebody's new to your service, they're interested in licensing some music, just kind of walk them through what they need to do when they get to songfreedom.com to kind of make that happen. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you can click any number of places there. There's a there's a buy button on any song that you want. Uh, that's going to prompt you to sign up. There, there's uh, you know a couple of calls to action that can enable you to sign up. All you're doing is, is entering your information. Uh, it's going to store your credit card info, so you don't have to like go back every time you want to purchase a song and, and do something again. You log in, and all your info is there. You click the license button on whatever song you find. We've got a great uh, search engine that lets you filter it down by, uh, you know, genre, usage type. If you're saying, I want to find something that's best for weddings, it's a folk song and a medium fast tempo between four to five minutes in length. And I want to sort by star rating or newly added to the site, whatever. You can do that. Uh, you click the button and a little uh, shadow box pops up there. You enter a project name. You click license, you get a license back with the audio file, license certificate, and a credit slide that you can even put at the end, and you're, and you're done. So uh, it's pretty simple. Guys, I'm telling you, it's an awesome service. I went on there, and I made the mistake of uh, uh, I got all the way. I, I created a demo for my company, and I was like, man, I'm going to use that, uh, you know, the Word Up song by Cameo. <laughs> and then I and then I read the fine print and was like, man, I can't use it for commercial reasons. And so I had to had to back out of it. But anyway, guys, check it out. Songfreedom.com. Matt, thank you. Uh, you know, appreciate your time. Uh, guys, if you want to learn more about uh, music licensing, definitely check it out again. Songfreedom.com. And if you want to know more about how to run a successful video production company, go to createinsights.com. That's K-R-E-8insights.com. Thanks for watching, and Matt, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks, man.